coin and a pen. Yep. Which, ignore the magic, ignore the magic. But the coin and the pen change places just like this. Oh! What? That's crazy, right? I'll do it again. Forget the pen, forget the pen. We'll just use the, uh, just the coin from what? one hand what? to the other. What? What's happening? Ooh. I'll do it again. Watch, watch the coin from here. Yeah, up here. In fact, that was the distraction to get the pen back. See? And that's the pen. You know where the coin is, right? <gasps> no! <laughs> Stop! Okay, watch, watch. watch. What? So one, two. Ooh, up to my pocket. Now, this is my favorite bit. Watch. One, two, three. Oh. Oh, that's, the, that's the coin, see? Actually, hang on oh. to the coin, hang on to the coin. Just a pen. From here. To that. <laughs> The coin? This is your favorite thing, right? <laughs> okay, let's do this. One more time, one more time. One, two, three. Oh my god. Nice. Sir, Thank please, you. please state your name and where my people can find Brendan you. My name is Brendan Rodriguez. My Instagram is Brendan Magic. So Thank much. you. Thank you. Thank you know what that you. routine is like? Yeah. It's like, it's like, fuck you, fuck you, yeah. fuck you, <laughs> you guys. You guys, every single, sorry, <laughs> language, language, Canadian. How are you feeling about your magic after that? First, okay, what we have here is one that I'm going to tell you exactly what I do, how I do, and when I do the move. Now that is, well, pretty much interlaced on my fingers. I'm going to do this in one second, watch, and I'll even tell you when. So from here to there, when I say now, let's make it harder for myself. Two bands at the same time. So from here to there, when I say now. Now. Welcome to Conversation with a Conjurer. I'm Daniel Rivington. This is Alex Johnson. Today with us is Brendan Rodriguez. Thanks for coming, Brendan. Hi, uh, everyone. Thank you for having me. Let's get this thing started. Uh, so thanks for coming, Brendan. Um, taking time out of your busy day to speak to us. Um, you, you were saying you were working on YouTube videos before you, before you came on. Um, what is it you're working yes. on right now? So at the moment with this whole lockdown thing, I can't really get out there and perform. Uh, and I'm doing a few Zoom shows, but again, we know it's not that busy. You've got to keep yourself busy with something. So I decided to go with the whole YouTube thing. Now, I didn't have a channel a while ago, but I decided, you know what, let's spend some more time actually editing, learning how to get better quality content out there. So that, that's, a, that's me at the moment, just making a lot of YouTube videos and I'm trying a bit of everything. So right now I've been just filming some reaction videos to some of my old TV shows that I did, old commercials. I'm doing some story time. I'm also giving magicians advice and trying to do a few more tutorials too. It's pretty cool that you're able to use your camera, your actual video yeah. camera as your webcam. Yeah, so I can zoom in and zoom out and that sort of thing, yeah. Nice, man. So what is that, uh, the poster you have set up behind you? Can we see that? Oh, that's that? a poster from Visualize. Uh, oh, nice. So that poster is, was, I was using this at Blackpool to sell my DVD. So at Blackpool, this poster was out there. I was in front of the poster doing my crystal ball, contact juggling. So it's got my name at the back. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a poster from Visualize. Yeah, it's a nice uh, background drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame that it's not wide enough because the camera is, you know, it's just a little strip there, but at least it's something. <laughs> so what, what was it that first got you into magic? Because uh, to me, for me to rehash a little bit, I first saw you uh, on a YouTube video, you're doing a coin trick. I think it's on Chris Ramsey's video. Okay. Yeah. After that, they ended up running into you at Blackpool. But uh, so what was it that actually got yeah. you into magic and coin magic and everything? Okay. So I got into magic about mm, maybe 11 or 12 years ago. And I was a bartender. So I was the kind of guy you would see behind a bar juggling and throwing bottles around uh, while making drinks. And I was behind the bar and I was performing. Um, well, I, I got into magic. I don't want to say I got into magic, but I went to a magic shop and bought a few tricks. Just simple things like sponge balls and Svengali cards and D-lights and things like that. I was messing around with that. And I was behind the bar and I did this move that took me about three years to learn. The three bottles over my shoulder, catch, pour, and the lady went like, yeah. And then I showed her something so simple like the sponge balls. And that took me three days to learn. And she went mental. She's like, oh my God, Janice, come here, check this guy out. He's amazing. And I said to myself, wow, if I even practice magic as much as I practice flair, I could do so much better. And ever since then, I was like hooked onto magic. And I, after, you know what it's like once you get reactions from people. So ever since then, I decided magic's what I want to do. And I started 
slowly getting out of bartending and getting more into magic. How long did it take you to make the transition from being a bartender magician to being a full-time magician? I would say a few years because the first few years I still had on my webpage bartender. And then after a while, about maybe two years into magic, I decided to change that brand into Flair Bartender and Magician. And I did that for about three years until 2012 or 13. And then I decided I'm going to retire. It's about seven years ago. I retired the whole flair bartending thing and only had a website that says magician. So a lot of the people who met me after that period don't even know, unless they watch my YouTube videos, they don't even know I was ever a bartender. Did the magic really help with making extra tips? Yes. So the magic, uh, what I used to do, so my little secret was when I used to be booked for a lot of the bartending jobs, I used to carry a bit of stuff with me. And at the end, after I finished my job, I used to tell the clients, would you like to see a little bit of stuff I'm practicing? And that gave me a chance to practice. And not only if I do mess up, they go, oh, he's just practicing. And also yeah. gives them, leaving them, you know, wanting more because the next time they book me now, they're going to book the magic because they didn't, they didn't know. They said, oh, flare bar and then with a bit of magic let's book him we'll see what he can do and i do that and then wow them with some amazing stuff and then later they call me back for the magic what types of uh, i was just i'm just curious what types of bars you know hire a flyer bartender because i've never even heard that term okay so this was pretty big back in the early 2000s when I got into it. I got into it in the late 19, maybe 1999, 2000, I got into flair bartending. Now, a lot of bars didn't know they wanted. They didn't even know what flair bartending was. Probably they saw it the first time on the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise and Brian Brown. And ever since then, a lot of bars in America had the whole flair bartending thing. I think in England, it wasn't that big. And in India, where I was living back then, it, no one knew about it. I was probably one of the first people, one of the first, not the first, one of the first people in India who started doing this flare bartending stuff. And I, if I could just finish reacting to a video of a TV, uh, TV show that I did back in India, it's kind of like the Got Talent show, but this was before even it was something like Got Talent. And there was an Indian show that I did 2002 or 2003. And I just finished reacting to that. I looked so different back then. Short hair, you know, clean shaven. I was so skinny. <laughs> yeah. I see you got a pretty righteous beard going on now. Yeah, for the lockdown. I decided, you know what? I always wanted to grow a beard, but I never, I could never really grow a beard because I'm constantly working. And I didn't want to have that initial look, which looks like you've just woke up from sleep. Yeah. Once it's grown long, now it's fine, you know. But the first week or so, that's terrible. And I didn't, didn't want to be at a gig with just a little bit of hair growing. So... Now it's fine. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this on or I'm going to shave it off before I start performing. But yeah, I would say it's my lockdown beard. Yeah. It's a good look. It's a good look. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I almost didn't recognize you. I was like, what? I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought, oh, that's cool. It's letting it grow out. Now, the first time yeah. me and you met was at Leeds Magic Circle where you did a lecture. Lecture, and, yes. Um, and um, I really enjoyed that lecture, by the way. Um, Thank you. Uh, while you did the lecture, you also mentioned about contact juggling. Um, Absolutely. Is that something you got into when you were doing flaring, or was it something um, magic related? To, you know, was, was, or is it just totally separate? Yeah. So while, so I'm never going to go back in while I was flaring. I loved flare just because of the the creativity and artistry you can bring to it. There's a lot of moves that are quite similar. Once you learn these moves, then it's, it's like learning basic hard moves and then creating your own routines. And I think depending on the music, I was just so in love with Flair. I just sleeping, I was sleeping, dreaming about Flair, you know, everything was Flair. And then when I got into magic, I decided, you know, when you get into magic, you're doing the same things like everybody else is doing. And then I said, what's going to make me different? At that point, I was actually going to a juggling club while I was flaring over there. And I watched a few other, not magicians, jugglers doing wonderful things with boy. And, you know, contact juggling was one of the art forms. And I said to myself, that's so different. Why can't I bring that into magic? And it looks magical already, but I wanted to add my own touch to it. So if you probably see my routines you probably know I pull out smaller bowls with it I make things vanish in it and get pens out of that and that sort of thing so that came over years of me trying to be a little different I didn't want to do card tricks like everybody else I didn't want to wear the same thing that everyone else is wearing so I decided how can I be different and that's where the whole contact juggling thing came in 
And I've been doing that for now about maybe six years, I would say, six years of consciously, yeah, just doing it constantly. Um, you, you mentioned about your clothes. I've noticed you wear some pretty flashy clothes. Like, I think you had scorpions on your shoes and stuff. Yeah, Is that fat? yeah. <laughs> well, do, do okay, think, so that's... Think... Go, on, go, go on, don't let, don't let me... No, so that, let me that came in. No, that's okay. That, that came in while I was... Um, there are some pictures of me somewhere on YouTube or uh, Facebook or one of these things where I was all white. So when I got into magic, every magician's just wearing black. All they wear is a tie. Well, at least what I saw, you know, every magician, all his shoes, great look, you know, but it's just so generic. And I wanted to stand out. I've always been this kind of person. Even when I was young, I used to have like a black nail polish and finger rings. And I used to like to try and be a little more creative with everything I did, even the dressing sense. And when I got into magic, I said, what did I want to be just the opposite? And I went to this whole white face where I had a white jacket, white trousers, even the decks of cards. I had like a white ghost bicycle, ghost decks, and everything was white. And then later, I think it all evolves over the years. And I started to wear a little more flashy stuff. I tried to mess around with some jackets and then realized that the shoes, people remembered me for the gold shoes. So I decided to keep that brand, um, like Gold Shoes Magician. I even bought the domain name, goldshoesmagician.com, just because when people remember you, they're not going to remember your name unless you have a very easy name or very catchy name. But Brenton Rodriguez was a little difficult name, but they didn't remember the guy with the gold shoes. So I started to incorporate that in my act and started to tell people while I'm performing, oh, don't look at the shoes, that's just misdirection. Uh, you know, and they'll say, oh, I'll say something like, people remember me for my gold shoes or something like that, where they go, okay, so when they, when they leave me and they go away from that, they remember gold shoes. And when they Google that, my website pops up. So I think that, that's when I decided gold shoes, let's, let's wear something up here. I didn't want to wear a bow or a tie. So I decided to get necklaces, which are pretty unisex. I think I think more, I get most of my stuff from female jewelry stores more than guys, not, not like a clothing shop or something. So yeah, I have a lot of crocodiles around my neck, snakes like this one here. I've got scorpions and things like that. And um, Brendan Rodriguez, is that like a stage name or... Um... No, that's is, my is real that name. So that's, that's the name on my birth certificate. Yes, that's the name my father gave me. My father's name is Archie and my mother's name is Avril. So not very Indian names I know. A lot of people say, you're from India. Why, how, come, you know, how come you have that Latin American name? Um, and I think in India, it's, it's not common, but there's a lot of people who I think were colonized by the Portuguese ancestors that colonized parts of India, like Goa. And I guess that's where the name comes from. Uh, like my, my mother's surname is De Souza before she got married to my father. So uh, there's a lot of people in India who have these kind of names, but people out here don't realize that. They usually think of an Indian name like Patel or something like that, you know, a very common Indian name. How long, yeah, did, you, uh, how long did you live in uh, India before you moved? I lived in India, I would say, I lived here most of my adult life. So I left India when I was maybe about 20, 21. Do you so speak Hindi, I, Bengali, or what? No, actually, I was like again to go back to the video I did. I I don't I, I understand a bit of Hindi, and for this interview I did on a TV show back in 2003, I had to speak in in Hindi, and I told them I don't want to speak in Hindi. I'm not very comfortable. My accent's not very good, and I um, apparently I still had to do it. So there's a video of me very cringy of me trying to speak in half Hindi and half English. <laughs> But yeah, no, I don't. I I have friends. Sometimes I'm at, at gigs where when people realize, oh, you're from India, they straight away start speaking to me in Hindi, and it's so awkward because I'm replying back to them in English and they're speaking to me in Hindi. And it's, but I try and stay because my accent's terrible. I don't want to, I don't want to insult someone or insult myself by by so speaking in a very. Bad do you accent. have like a an English Hindi accent, or uh, how, how I, what would that be? I I think I grew up watching a lot of Hollywood movies and a lot of. English music. I mean, I was listening to like metal music when I was, you know, my younger days, like Iron Maiden. I grew up with Metallica and stuff. I never really listened to a lot of the Bollywood music, as they say. So I never really watched a lot of Indian. Uh, most of my movies I grew up watching was like Home Alone and, you know, like British uh, American films. So um, I, oh, I, and plus my relatives that, that lived with me or my friends in the closed circuit, we all spoke in English. So apart from like, shopping or like taking public transport if i had to speak to somebody in india i spoke in hindi but 
I very rarely do that. So that hence my accent is is more, I would say, combination of American and British. Hmm. And obviously Indian, it's got that twine to it. What was it that yeah, you were, I, you were I doing? You were just, uh, I thought you were just like, I don't know, from somewhere down south. You know what I mean? Not, just not, like I could tell it was Yorkshire, you know, because that's a very particular accent. Yeah. I just thought, oh, it's, it's just, um, I would have thought you were Barnian with your accent. Oh. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's so confusing. And especially when they see my, because uh, uh, when I was younger, I had my hair down and I had this little goatee. And, uh, you know, people looking at my past, but looking at me. The like, chin Sorry? Yeah, the chin spike. Yeah, I had the little chin spike just down to here. There's some pictures I'll send you later. <laughs> so what, yeah, what sorts I, of things? I, uh, I, I listen to metal and stuff, and uh, I've got my guitar collection over there. I'll, I'll nice. Uh, never show you if we've got time afterwards. Yeah, um, yeah. I was in a metal band, and then. Um, oh, wow. But I think I, I sort of look the parts still a little bit with the. Uh, the man I could tell. Area. I could tell. I could tell you are into that. Yeah, <laughs> the, the hair bands. But yeah. what, what sorts of things have you did for TV? Oh, so you know, I always thought my first TV show was the BBC One Show because I always think of it like Magic Career. But now watching that video again, I think it's probably in India some some local television channel talking about my flair bar attending. But in terms of actual magic on TV, I would say the most famous thing I did was the ITV's Next Great Magician. That's the video on my page, on my YouTube page. That is, I think, I think, I think it's the best thing that I've done on TV. And how was the experience of making that? Oh, it's great. In fact, I just made a whole video about my experience on the ITV's Next Great Magician. But um, yeah, it was good. It was interesting because I realized things are so easier when it's not live TV because of the room for editing. Um, but I think, you know, the main thing is just be comfortable. If I had to sort of give advice to anybody doing a TV show, just be cool and relaxed. If it's live, yes, then be nervous. But if you, but, you know, don't be nervous, but I was nervous. But if it's not live, remember, they can always take off bits. Even if you mess up, it doesn't matter, you know. So if it's, I mean, I don't know, depending on the TV show, like Britain's Got Talent, yeah, be aware of that. Um, unless you're going through a proper source but if you're just going to do a proper tv show that wants to make you look good they will make you look good don't worry about that just be cool and relax now um when you started magic did you start in yeah. london did, i started start in, in oxford so before i moved to london i was in a, I, I came to england to a town a town called tame which was a little outside Oxford and then in mm. about a year I moved to Oxford I lived there for about maybe three or four years before I actually moved to London about 12 years ago so I started magic during Oxford I would say and I, I, I dragged that whole point as I came to London then that's when I took it further and I, I uh, so yeah only about seven six seven years ago I took it full time so I was still bartending while I moved to London when, when, you, moved bars, from, when you moved from one area to another did you then find it hard to build up a steady stream of gigs? Well, when I was in Oxford, I was still bartending. So I still had my bartending clients. But when I came to London, I I think I pretty much stayed in London my entire magic career, I would say. So I didn't really have that issue of leaving London. Um, so I can't really answer that question, you know, to, to its best because I've been in London pretty much my entire magic career. Did you ever do any um, busking outside Covent Garden, isn't it? I have tried it. Now, I'm not a busker. I, I, I so the busking thing, Simon Drake. Uh, if anyone watching knows Simon Drake, you probably know how um, Secret Cabaret and that sort of thing. But Simon Drake, I was working for him. And at that, that time, he told me, he said, here's a little homework for you. I want you to go and start street performing. Now, I was so nervous about doing that. I told him, Simon, I really don't want to do street performing. And he's like, look, if you can street perform, you could do anything. You could perform anywhere. And remember, if you have no money or you're stuck with something, remember, the streets will keep you going. So please learn magic on the streets. And it's a different ballgame. So for a week, I went to the streets of Covent Garden and Leicester Square and I did my act. Uh, it was terrible, by the way, but I still did it. And recently, about a year ago, I made a video with a friend called Paul Regan. And we made a video on how much can we make 
how much money can we make on the streets of London busking? So it's more like a, I did it mainly for the video, so I wasn't really busking as such, but it was more for video things, so it's filming me. What was and, the bottom uh, dollar if, at the end of the film? Uh, well, I'll let you watch the YouTube video for that. Yeah, you spoil watch the video. You. Uh, you better watch the video for that. Uh, but it's obviously, it's between zero to a hundred. We didn't go more than a hundred pounds and we were there for about four or five hours. Uh, it yeah. was more like, it's a different, so street shows are a little different than regular busking because we had that spot for the whole four or five hours. So we were constantly getting in there, doing our thing for like maybe five, 10 minutes and getting out. It wasn't a proper show as that, so very different. But yeah, watch the video if you want to see more about what we did in the shenanigans we went up to. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be uh, good, good to see that. Um, mm. Where can people find your YouTube channel? Uh, just type in Brendan Magic. I mean, I'm sure you'll put the links. I can give you a link to put yeah. that below the video. But uh, if, you, if you're watching this and you don't have a link, it just, just type in Brendan Magic and you'll find me. Fantastic. How did, how did um, you end up in Chris Ramsey's video? I think that's the first Okay, one. so I was at Blackpool and I had released Visualized maybe about one year before that. And... You know, when you release something in, in the magic community and you go to a convention, they always recognize you like, hey, you're the guy who does the coin and pen thing. Can you do that for my vlog? Can you? And then someone told Chris Ramsey, uh, check this guy. He's got some cool coin and pen stuff. So uh, Chris said, can I film you? I was like, yeah, go ahead, of course. So I did my routine for him. And the next thing I realized, I got so many people messaging me on Instagram after that. It just blew up saying, oh, we just saw you on Chris Ramsey's vlog and all oh, they started following me and didn't know who I was. I really wish I had my YouTube channel back then. So that's a mistake I made. I started YouTube. I mean, I had a YouTube channel, but I never really pushed YouTube until about a year and a half to two years ago. And this was, I think, in 2017. So when I started YouTube, I missed that opportunity of getting all those followers, you know, from his channel. But um, yeah, I've still I've done some collaborations with Alex Boyer and a few other YouTube, well, I'll say personalities. So yeah. What has been your method for growing your Instagram? I noticed that uh, you've gained quite a few new followers since I first met you. Uh, well, it, I work a lot of bars and clubs. So that means I work Okay, so I'm a resident magician. I don't do a lot of weddings. A lot of my work is bars. Sometimes I even do four in a day. I've got a YouTube video with me trying to film with my cell phone of me jumping from one residency to another. I did two hours here, then two hours after an early scene and ended up with like a nightclub or something. And it's, it's just tired. But it, imagine the amount of people I'm meeting. Every table I go to at a bar, especially the rooftop, there's like a group of like eight or nine people. There's like two, three hundred people in that venue. Every table that I do, they I think I'm there for tips or something. So I say, look, I'm not here for money or tips. I know it's really bad. Some people watching this, they, they, they it's, it's, you know, either the people are like, should you say that or should you not say that? But I just tell them, like, I'm not here. I don't want your tips. I don't want your money. If you like what I do, Here's my card, you can follow my Instagram. And I do that at every single table. I drop cards whether they like it or not. And uh, from each venue, so let's say if I'm doing one venue for about 200 people, not everyone's gonna follow you, but if they like you and you're really nice, why wouldn't they? They don't have to pay any money. I just say, if you like, and you don't have to follow me. Here's my card, if you like it, that's my Instagram. And another tip and trick I could give you is, um, if you have your friend filming them, again, this works with a younger group, not the older people. They all want to be on Instagram and social media. If you have your friend filming you, walking around with you with a probably a better camera, if, if it makes sense, not just a cell phone, uh, then you can tell that group of people that you perform to, about eight to 10 people, uh, oh, we're filming this for Instagram. Would you like to be part of this Instagram video? Now, every one of those, will want to see that video. So you'll say, oh, that video is going to come up in two weeks. Now they will follow you until, you know, maybe they'll unfollow you after that video. Or you don't know, but they will follow you to watch that video. And if you do that on every table, even if you're not paid to do a residency, let's say you're at a beach or something and you've got a thousand people at that beach. You're walking with professional camera crew. You don't have to be on TV. Just say, I'm, a, I'm doing part of a TV show or whatever. And you film them. And you say, oh, the video is going to be out on Instagram. Guaranteed they're going to watch that. So that's my little tip. I saw in one of your vlogs, I think it was uh, for the previous year's Blackpool, you had the, it mm -hmm. seemed like you were on a train and you had a pretty good sized crew going around with you. Oh, okay. So they were, so I, for the Blackpool conventions, we tried to take a trip together because it's just so much fun. And plus it's great for filming and stuff. So we were sitting in the train and as you were up north, people are a lot more friendlier. 
and they want to chat with you. Uh, in South, you know, London people are just busy with their, you know. And I, I, I'm not a person who's going to go out of my way to do, you know, oh, you want to see magic or something. So they were interested in our conversation. We as magicians sitting in a group, some of the lads said, oh, you know what, can you... Uh, show us some tricks. So while I started showing them some, some stuff, uh, even the ticket collector stopped and we did some magic for her. And uh, we basically, they just caught my camera over filming and a lot of people filmed from cell phones. So it looks like a lot of people, but I think it was just about seven or eight of us on that train heading up together. And we just happened to have my camera with me. So that's what you saw in the video. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, the old saying that perception is reality. Whenever I first saw that, I was like, man, this guy here, he's, he's rolling deep. You know, he's dressed fancy. He has a big crew of people, has one guy on yeah. a laptop, you know, editing yeah. the website or whatever. Yeah, no, that's not true. I'm, uh, but but he's just friends of mine. But you know what? If you can make it look like this, you know, hats off to you then. <laughs> you mentioned really before fun. about um, Simon Drake giving you advice. Uh, a, a question that we usually ask uh, people on this podcast is, uh, did you have any mentors when... Um, learning magic and um, if you've mentored anyone else and sorry yeah, that's the end of the question yep, that's the question okay so I have a lot of students I teach uh, all over the world really because I do a lot of zoom chats and I do one-on-one -on -one master classes I even have students in London that I teach on a regular basis but when it comes to me learning the I am self-taught right but Again, there's only so far you can go with self taught magic. If you really want to know the inside, you have to be hanging out with magicians who really know the arts and appreciate the skill and the, the performance, the value of performance and all of that. And I would say after joining the magic circle, I've met a lot of people like Michael Vincent, Chris Wood, you know, Tom Whitestone. There's so many other magicians at the magic circle that uh, when you're performing, they'll give you tips because it's a very friendly community. And I think it's so important to get feedback from other magicians because they will look at you and say, do you know what? We've seen you do it hundreds of times. Could you maybe do that with a bit of smile? Could you pause at that point in your routine? Could you give that a three second beat on you know, producing a smaller ball or whatever. I think uh, I've learned a lot from, especially from Chris Wood, because we're always jamming at the magic circle. And uh, yeah, uh, Paul Reagan's another good friend of mine. We, he sort of tells me sometimes, oh, do you know what I saw that? Because he's not shy to say that, you know, you've got to be honest with your friend. Obviously he's not going to say that on camera in front of hundreds of people saying, hey, by the way, you flashed there. Or he'll come up to me on the side. So same with you watching at home, if you have any magic friends and you're really good friends, you want them to do better. So you would go up to them again in a nice way, you know, say, look, I want to give you some con constructive criticism. That thing you did there with the coin or whatever in your left hand was flashing a little bit. Can you maybe lift your angles a little higher and actually give them honest advice and how people will really appreciate that. So I guess that's the way that's my, yeah, as a juggler, there's a lot of honesty in juggling. With magic, a lot of people don't want to do it because it's like, with magic, if you know the secret, anyone can do it. Not all the tricks, but some of the tricks, as you know, as magicians, when you know how it's done, you're like, oh, I can buy the next prop. And because of that, there's a lot of secrecy in the magic community. People don't want other magicians to buy the same thing or do what they're doing. Um, but in the juggling community is very different. And because my, that's my background, I sort of incorporate that into my magic. And I'm always happy to share and give people advice. Even on Instagram, I, I, I do like video chats with people. Uh, I don't I don't go live and chat, but I do personal video chats sometimes. And I actually spend about five, 10 minutes. They're not my students. They're not paying me anything at all for this. And I just want to give them some advice if they ask me. So I'd like to give them personal advice. That personal touch, I think, is so important for people to actually, you know, really appreciate what you're doing and, and follow you, I guess. There's one thing that Ryan Loyal said about you. Uh, he said that he's watching your videos and said that he was so impressed and he decided to reach out and just mentioned that you were so friendly and you guys ended up becoming friends because I guess he saw your channel or something. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's a lovely guy. I mean, I, I have all the time in the world for Ryan. Uh, he's been on my channel. I've interviewed him on my channel. And he's such a lovely guy. You know, sometimes there's such genuine guys out there like Ryan. And, you know, they reach out to me, I reach out to him, you build a beautiful friendship. And I think that's important, even though, especially with now we're using technology in this part of the century or wherever we are from, uh, we could just chat with anyone all over the world. In fact, before this, I was just chatting with my friend Edward Tudor, who's got another YouTube channel, obviously not bigger than I am. He's at like 43,000 subscribers or whatever. But uh, yeah, he's, you know, I reached out to him on YouTube, messaged him, and then he reacted to one of my videos. And now we sort of just chat with each other every now and again. So it's so important to have this one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. So, yeah. Um. 
have you got any products um, that you're going to be releasing in the near future? Um, so my one of my goals in the magic career. So I had many goals when I started. I know it's a long answer, but I'm going to come back to the products. Uh, one of the goals was uh, to win Magician of the Year, the Magic Circle. I wanted to get join the Magic Circle. It was an easy goal. I didn't realize how easy it was, but uh, I joined the Magic Circle. I won that. I wanted to release a product in the community, and I didn't really have any goals of you know releasing a lot more products. So I have released something which is called Visualize. It's a DVD. Um, there's no gimmicks or no gaffs or anything. It's pure sleight of hand. Is that and the pen I, and coin thing? The coin. Well, it's not the coin and pen routine that you see me do now for my competition, but it's very similar. The same move is on there, but instead of me using a coin on the DVD, I do it with hearts. And I do my crystal ball and that sort of thing. I teach all the productions of the smaller ball, which although I'm doing tutorials on YouTube, I don't teach the magic stuff. I just teach flourishing on YouTube. But mm -hmm. I didn't really have any other... Um, goals to release more products. I just want to release something and I did that. So yeah, I've not really released anything. I don't have anything in mind, but it was just one thing I released. I don't think I want to release any more. I think at the moment I'm just focusing on YouTube. That's all I'm doing. So yeah, no releases for me, sorry. So what's the uh, best piece of advice that you've received um, in magic or otherwise? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I've released, I've received a lot of advice from different magicians, but I think uh, the best is probably not, me not personally, but I think Eugene Berger would bring that up because he didn't say that to me, but he says that to a lot of people is what do you want your magic to be? So, uh, you know, what do you, and even Michael Vincent had something similar. He told me, what do you want people to look at you and see? And in that way, you can structure your act accordingly. Once you know what your brand is all about, and you because otherwise everyone's doing the same thing, right? What sets you apart from everybody else? What are you, like, uh, there's no right or wrong answer because I think I said, some people might say, I want my audience to laugh, right? I don't care if they're amazed or not. Uh, some people say, I want them to be amazed. For me, I said, I want them to walk away thinking that's the most skillful person they've seen. Uh, it doesn't have to be magic because obviously, you know, some of the stuff that I do, it's very obvious when you see, you know, you watch it the second time, you can see how it's done. So I don't really care if someone comes up to me and says, oh my God, you fooled me. That's, I mean, that's good if it happens, but I think what I appreciate more, if someone comes up to me and says, you know, I know how you're doing this, but my God, you're so good at what you do. And for me, that's much better. Um, doing the, because my background's a juggler and my whole thing was about display skill. I know it's not magic related, but at least once you know what you want your audience to perceive you, I think then you're on the right track. So that's, I would say that's advice I can give somebody else what this. As you, is your character more of a blend of your own personality, but with the flair? How did you come up with your own, you know, magical style? You mentioned the shoes. Like, how did you decide? Yeah. Okay, this is it. So I'm very shy. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I, mean, I am really quite shy, and I let, I always let my. Um, clothing speak for itself. So just me having those shoes on, it, it's a conversation starter for someone in the train who's walking around like, what are those? And uh, then I'll, I'll say, oh, by the way, I'm a magician. And then if they ask me to do something, I'm happy to show them something. Some, some, something. But I think my, my character, I've always been this show off, but really shy. So I like performing. I like doing things, but I don't want to go out of my way and say, oh, watch, watch me do this. So I think I let my dressing do that. And that's why I was so loud on my dressing because I wasn't really loud vocally. So that's my character. I've seen you, with, like I've seen, I've seen you with studded, studded golden shoes uh, with my big studs on them. I've seen you with, uh, I think they were black shoes, but they had a big gold scorpion on them. I, I remember, oh, I've got about like 40 them. pairs of shoes here. I've got loads You're of have necklaces. You're to show us this collection at um, some point. <laughs> I mean, what I'll do right now, just very quickly, I'll, I'm going to change the virtual background just for a second to show you my shoe collection. Okay. That there is my shoe collection. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a bunch of shoes I've never seen uh, before. I know. So uh, that's, I just it just took a picture of my, because I posted on Instagram a long time ago. I put my, my shoe collection on there because people were asking me, oh, 
can, can we see your shoes? And I've seen you with green shoes and red shoes and yellow shoes. So I was like, look, I, here's my collection. Here's the picture. <laughs> and I think I, I, I posted it as like, what shoe? Oh, I think it was like, uh, what shoe do I wear today or something? Like that. Like, so it see. seems that most magicians, they reinvest their money that they make back into buying gimmicks and tricks, but you reinvest yeah. back into your clothing. Yeah. In my jackets, my clothing, my necklaces. That's what, because I think you don't need that much of magic. You, I'm sure we all have, okay, so let's rephrase this again. We all, all have loads of different magic. When you perform at a wedding, people are seeing you for about five or 10 minutes, really. And maybe you're doing a longer show, they'll see a little more, but most places that I work are residencies and all they see me is for like about five minutes. So how much magic do you need? You know, you can just learn about 10, 20 things and if you do it well, it's great. Then just focus on performance and focus on your character, whether you are funny or you want them to get scared of you. Nothing wrong with that. You can go down this really gothic route, whatever you want to uh, dress just so people remember you. Um, and that's where I took it from. So I learned a few tricks, but I learned it really well. So I know so that gonna... you have to, uh, I know that you have to leave here in about 10 minutes. So I just have a couple of final questions. Okay, sure. What, what advice would you have for, you know, magicians that are just getting started or they're trying to find themselves? And then what advice would you give to help them discover their own personal brand and to help them discover, you know, their look? Ooh, tough question. <laughs> um, for new magicians, I would say just watch everybody else and do you know copy, you know copy somebody else if you if you have to it doesn't matter for the first few years until you reach your because it's really hard to just say find your personality because it's so hard most people go like but i don't know what i mean i'm a student i you know i could use that in my act and but i think just it it will come after a while i think after a while of performing realize what kind of tricks suit you if you want to go down the whole mentalism thing go down that route and just dress accordingly you know, act accordingly, speak accordingly, and focus on that. So, yeah, it's a tough thing. I think it just it's just a matter of flight time. The only advice I could give you is just get out there and perform. Perform as much as you can. Perform every way you can, whether weddings, parties, charity events, as much as you can, because the more flight time you have, there's a more chance of you getting your character. There we go. Excellent answer. All right, any more questions? I know I cut that really short, but... Uh, was that not Dave Bateman outside on. your house? Sorry? Alex, was that Dave Bateman outside your house? What? Speak English, my friend. It's basically on the street, it's, it's Alex. It's, it's like outside. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm sitting outside on a patio here, my computer set up on the porch. <laughs> so, yeah, any more questions? Uh, that was um, my last couple. Are you okay. planning on doing uh, another lecture tour when the lockdown ends? Ah, so, my, okay, about lectures, good point, actually, because I wanted to, one of my uh, dreams was to travel around the world lecturing, because although I love performing, I think I like lecturing a little better. And I want to go to America, I want to go to Europe, do a lecture tour, saying that next week I have a lecture in Europe, but via Zoom. Unfortunately, with the situation, we can't really travel, but it at least it's a start. And I think if I do a Zoom lecture, a lot of people would see me and eventually, I think in the next few years, I do want to take a trip around the world lecturing. I've done a lot of places in the UK, but I haven't done like a worldwide lecture. So that's my next thing. I need to How find, so if anyone's watching this, who has contacts or someone who organizes lecture tours, do get in touch with me. I'm definitely interested in doing like a whole um, lecture tour. So how do you approach people about doing lectures or, or, is, or is it more of a case that they approach you? I think it's a word of mouth thing. You could email them. I think the best best advice I would say for that is be at a place like Blackpool where there's so many other magicians that pop in. There's so many uh, people who are in charge of booking the lectures. And if they see you, they uh, they don't need a profile. They just, they just see you. You have a chat with them, exchange business cards, exchange details, and then just keep in touch. But definitely be seen at places like Blackpool or whatever. Have you done one for the Magic Circle? Yes. So again, one of my goals, and I think that's my one of the last goals I achieved recently, and I even vlogged about it, if it's on my vlog, is I got a chance to lecture at the Magic Circle. When I joined the Magic Circle, I was like, oh, I wish I could just lecture one day. I've done small mini lectures, but not, not in the actual theater that was streamed live to an audience. And I finally did that 
early, I think it was last year. I did last year and absolutely loved it. Yeah. It's just so happy to be there. In fact, most lecturers, they come and sell their stuff after the lecture. When I finished my lecture, I said, look, every, all of you guys know, because you're lecturing from your peers and stuff, right? So I said, all of you know me, you don't need to buy any, I'm not here to vlog or sell my DVDs or, I'm oh, sorry, vlogs, right, but not vlog. I'm not here to vlog my DVDs and you don't need to buy anything. Just get in touch with me. Uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. You know, I'll tell you where you can buy stuff from if you need to. There. and yeah. I was respected for that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hate it when you um, go to see a lecturer and it's a deal with them. It doesn't yeah, matter. I, I think that I didn't like, like, I mean, yeah, I like lectures and then when they deal with them, they're like, oh, okay, it's interesting, but then you have to buy the prop. And I think the reason they do that is because nothing wrong with that, but you make a lot of money with lectures. Some lecturers at Blackpool, they just walk away with loads of cash. But I think the magicians watching them go, do you know what? I'd rather list, learn something I can do right away. I've just spent so much of money on crap. So I wanted my lecture to actually be a lecture where people are getting something out of it. Which Brendan, I, yeah. Do you believe in magic? Do I believe in magic? Well, it's a, it's a tricky question because uh, I do believe in a particular type of magic, but not the magic that the general sense that people think about, you know? It's a, it's a tricky one. I don't know if I should even speak about this because I don't want to offend anybody. I, that's, the, that's the thing with my whole channel, because when you're on YouTube, you might, uh, now you're going down the whole dabbling into you know, supernatural stuff. And I don't want to offend anyone. So I I don't know if I want to answer this question because if I say something like, I don't believe in all this black magic, some people actually believe that and they come up to me and say, are you using black magic and stuff? And it's a tricky one. I don't want to, you know, hurt their feelings by saying that's all crap or whatever. I don't want to go down the whole Ben Gillette route. So I, yeah, I would say maybe and maybe not. <laughs> that's the best way, diplomatic way to answer that question. I, I say um, magic exists in the heart of children. Okay, um, well, okay, that's a, that's a better answer than <laughs> mine was terrible. Um, I didn't rehearse that question. Right? But it is a bit of a cop out, isn't it? I'm not really answering the question, but, um, <laughs> but it's a nice. Out. It's like yeah, magic is all in the mind of some. But I guess yeah, but yeah, it's a cop out because because really, I mean, I don't know if that's your question, but really, you want you, people when they come up to me, they ask me, is it tricks or is it magic? And I know what they mean. Um, uh, and they, uh, because certain, you know, people from certain parts of the world, they believe in like voodoo stuff and, um, and I don't want to like be the one to, you know, genies say and stuff this. as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they believe it. Uh, you'd never know where with, you know, what someone's grown up and what sort of belief. And, uh, you know that you're a good magician if people actually believe that what you're doing is real magic. <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, I know sometimes I do things where, especially with, things like double cross or something like not with my contact juggling mm -hmm. uh, they sort of know that's that's that skill to some extent but they they seriously come up to me later and say well that thing you did um, you know do you really have powers or something and it just uh, what do i say you know if i could do that would i be here or you know like i don't know what to answer is so, it to sign a contract with the devil or yeah um, yeah uh, do you speak but they ask me, and, like people say that, like, do you sign a contract with the devil? And they say it in a, in a fun way. And I know they're joking, but sometimes I can tell that people are really serious. They really, like, I'll smile at them and go like, oh, this person's really serious. Really yeah, yeah. They're in, like, in you can so. see the concern in their eyes. That yeah. They, 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 they might be speaking to someone who's... So, yeah. So especially, yeah, especially you get that with mentalism. If you're, if you're ever doing mentalism, that's oh, like... Yeah that's that's going to freak people out because that's the closest you would say to that kind of magic because you're reading their minds as such you know that's more believable than making a crystal ball float i guess i don't know but with well, mentalism i think you hit the pitfall of people coming up to you and go what i think and then yeah, yeah. And then, you know yeah. and, 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 and you need to have an answer for that then yeah. yeah well yeah um peter turner's got a really good answer and my answer is something like um I know better than to try and read your mind, Ben. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess it depends on your personality. You can push it away in that in that aspect. You know, it depends on how your uh, your character. Think about what your character would answer. So, where are you going to be in five years' time? Mm. Now, because I'm I'm focusing on YouTube at the moment, 
everything, my mind, everything I'm doing is YouTube. I'm hoping that in five years I'll, I'll be on a, as a, as a full-time YouTuber and not having to make money out of performing, although I will perform because I love performing, but I don't have to rely on that. I want to have, uh, because I, I like to be honest with all my fans and followers. I'm, I'm quite honest with them. At the moment, I do make money off YouTube, but I make five pounds a month. <laughs> if you really want to know, approximately some, some months I make six pounds. <laughs> so that's me at the moment. So from that, you're not, doing a, you're not doing a Patreon or anything like that though, are you? No, I, like I, I know I, I spoke to you before the, the chat started. Um, I made a video recently. I said, I don't know if it's right for me to ask you for money right now. Again, again with YouTube, my audience is very niche. I'm, I'm, my audience is magicians or people who like magic. I'm interviewing a lot of people and that sort of thing. So my, my audience is not this big wide audience. If you're talking about makeup tutorials or talking about movies, it's a bigger genre of people that watch that. Sorry, there's, there's more people that watch that genre. Because I'm such a niche, it's really hard for me unless I'm giving tutorials, magic tutorials, which I don't really want to do at the moment. My channel is once you've already know magic, then you come onto my channel. So it's not a the, big uh, enough the magic, magic circle. Magic. Sorry, this, the, magic the magic circle. circle magic yeah, 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 that's one that. of the reasons. Yeah, the, one of the reasons is the magic circle will kick me out. And I like the magic circle too much. Um, but, you know, uh, my, my friend Piyush asked me a good question recently from Canada. He said, if you had a lot of money, would you actually start teaching magic on YouTube? And I was like, that's a good question. Because, you know, there's always that question where how much would you? Because obviously you, you'll say, oh, I would never do that. But for, for a certain bit of money, you would. Maybe it's a million pounds or whatever, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I would, but I don't know. So I'm still thinking about the answer. What would it take for me to actually say, you know what, to help with the magic circle, I'm going to be revealing tricks on YouTube. You know, to help with people who've created stuff, I'm not going to care for their copyright or whatever law, uh, intellectual property. I'm just going to give away other people's secrets. What would it take? Obviously, there, there's, there's a point where I would do that at some point, but you know, what is it? Is it like a million pounds, you know, or is it just maybe... Two thousand pounds. <laughs> so uh, I'm still I think thinking the issue about with that, that, is that as well. I think the issue with that as well is that, yeah, it, like if you if you did start doing tutorials, it probably would exponentially grow your channel. Like I know that. <laughs> I know it. Would, <laughs> it would definitely grow. So I think I want to have a fine line where I am teaching, but I'm not really teaching methods. And I think magicians would respect me, but other people watching my channel, like newer people who are not magicians, they go, oh, this guy's rubbish. He's not really teaching anything. And they'll click away. So I'm, I'm willing to take that risk at the moment. But at the moment, I again, things will change. Things change all the time, whether you're, you're performing career or your YouTube career. At the moment, I've just bought loads of like microphones and lighting and I'm investing in a lot of like better equipment at the moment. Uh, I still feel like I'm so tiny on YouTube. I have a long way to go. But I think once you start the ball rolling, it's a lot more quicker. So the first five, 10,000 followers, subscribers, it's hard. And then later, once you reach 40, 50, it grows up really quickly from there. So well, maybe in five years, this, yeah. How about this for an idea? I'm just spitballing, you yeah. don't have to take my advice or whatever. How about starting a Patreon where people who want to learn magic can pay a certain amount and then mm -hmm. they're paying for it and you're not publicly exposing it? Yeah. So what you're saying is absolutely right. And I'm already doing that. I'm not doing it through Patreon, but I'm actually doing private classes. Now you're right by saying if I had the Patreon, more people would actually get hold of me because again, there's no rules of the magic circle. You can't teach magic. Of course, I can teach magic to anybody who's willing to learn and who's willing to pay to learn, not give away for free. So I might do that. You know what? You're absolutely right, Dan. I might even do the whole Patreon thing in the future, but We'll see. We'll see. It's up in the air, but that's a good point. Yeah, because I'm actually doing that anyways, but I like your point of adding Patreon to that. Yeah, well, then, you know, you could have different tiers where you have, like, maybe you subscribe for a dollar and you mm -hmm. get the basic things and then um, maybe put your DVD on at 20, it, it, but then they pay yeah. this every month. Some, yeah. I so I got to, you know what, you're absolutely right. I will think about that. I will think about that. And uh, because you're not the first person to say that a lot of people have asked me about Patreon and um, maybe I'll do that in the future.
have you thought about doing any uh, like a line of merch whether it be little books yeah. or shirts or anything a lot of people have said that too i i think maybe it in the future but at the moment i'm not a big it it's gonna be shoes do you know what it i actually thought about making my own shoes i even went to designing my shoes at the moment uh, at, at some point and i spoke to a company but the thing is you have to buy so many yeah. to actually make it worth your while selling them and i think i might do it in the future but again i don't have that much of money to invest in that at the moment yeah so uh that's on a hold but in the future if i do have a lot of money i will be making my own shoes well we look forward to seeing whatever you come out with then <laughs> thanks alex hey I, I know that uh, this had to be a short episode but we'd love to have you back on the show if you had another day sure. to maybe spend a little bit more time sounds good um, sounds good to me i think we've um uh, made a lot of uh, space in the short amount of time uh, yeah I think um, I think just short of an hour is pretty much um, the cut off point for when people st stop paying attention anyway um, yeah you know like I, I think th there's, there's a huge drop off after about 15 minutes and then yeah. um, and then yeah. like an hour is basically where most people would tune you know yeah. even, even, even people who are way in the magic Exactly. Yeah, a lot of Speaking yeah, of a lot niche. of people treat it like a podcast. So, I mean, obviously, you you have a podcast, anyways. But a lot of people, if they're watching long videos on YouTube like this, they'll leave it playing on a speaker or a headset or whatever, and they'll just do some other stuff mm -hmm. while that's playing. But speaking that's of a niche, uh, exactly niche market, you know, like it's it's really niche to have a magic teaching, you know, channel. But then it's even more niche to have a magic podcast channel. Yeah, exactly. This is so, like yeah. as niche as it can get, probably. I know. <laughs> it's like nerd yeah. talk. Yeah. Nerd talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, you need to you need to be invested somewhat into uh, learning nerd stuff to actually want to listen to this kind of stuff. Mm. But if you are and into the, it, the people it's that are, are watching it, yeah, it's it's great though. You know, being able to learn little bits from everybody that we've had on here. Yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to come on, and uh, thank thanks you, for Alex. watching the show. And thank you, Dan. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Um. um to everybody at home, please check out Brendan Rodriguez's his, um, YouTube channel. Um, what's your Instagram handle? Is it Brend at Brendan my, Rodriguez? My, yeah, my Instagram is at brendan.magic. So this is a little dot. That's brendan.magic. Yeah. Um, so um, follow him on there. And um, <laughs> it, I've, where did you say you? Um, the little glass ball production video. The, the when, oh, the visualized the DVD. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say forget all of that. Just follow me on YouTube. <laughs> forget even Instagram. I'm not very active on Instagram. Uh, apart from like when I have conversations, I just put it up there. So if anyone wants to join in the conversation, that's the only thing you would need Instagram for. But I think YouTube is you'll get all my all the questions, what you're ask, asking me about the ball and everything's answered on YouTube, on YouTube. So that's the best way I would say. Yeah. But the DVD is Fantastic. called Visualize, but yeah. All right, man. Thanks so much. And I hope you have a lovely Thank rest you. of the day. And um, Thank to you. everybody at home, please can you uh, click the subscribe, the likes, the, the things, do, do the things. You do the things, the things. yeah. Follow the coming. channel. Thanks for watching Thank all you. the way through. And um, hope to see you all again soon. All right, thanks so much. Take care. Bye, everyone. See you Bye. later. Bye.